Thakan ki, all praises to Yohiwa Wakan Tanka. Praise be to the earthly mother, the Pachamama, and all of her earthly angels, the Huakakuna. Praise be to the Wakan Samai, the Shekinah, the Holy Spirit. In the name of Matza Yue Han, unification to the nation. So, guys, as promised, we are going to get into who is Palenki. Now I put I put this up in the community section a while ago, and uh, I hope that people had the opportunity to research it because you probably should have found what you needed to find. So let's just get right into it. Palenque. Set amid lush forest in southern Mexico, Palenque is not the largest Mayan city but it is one of the most stunning. Its architecture, sculpture, and carvings are among the finest this fascinating civilization ever produced. Palenque was also technologically advanced. A sophisticated aqueduct system provided the inhabitants with abundant spring water. In the 7th century AD, Palenque is ruled over by a powerful king, Pakal the Great. Pakal has the longest reign of any Mayan monarch. He ascends the throne in 615 and rules until his death 68 years later. During this time, he oversees the construction of some of Palenque's most impressive sacred sites such as the massive central palace and the iconic Temple of the Inscriptions. Here in 1952, archaeologists made a discovery that gave a new insight into what the Maya believed about life and the afterlife. Excavating the temple floor they uncovered a passage to a chamber deep within the pyramid. It contained a sarcophagus covered by a stone lid. Within lay the remains of a Mayan dignitary wearing a jade death mask. Hieroglyphs on the sarcophagus confirm his identity. This is the tomb of King Pakal himself. But even though it is a place of burial, it is also intended as a place of resurrection. The images on the sarcophagus lid illustrate a central Mayan belief that the universe is made up of three levels, the earth, the underworld, and the heavens. Having departed this world, Pakal emerges from the underworld and is reborn into eternal life in the heavens. This is the essence of Mayan religion. Get a clear perspective of what they're telling us here. What they didn't teach us in school. The high civilized science in these cities. The grandeur of the architecture, right? In all these places, larger, Character all pursue high civilized hieroglyphics, planispheres, character all present in the temple in Palenque. A character all present in the most positive evidences of the existence of a powerful enterprise and nation which must have flourished 2,000 years before the Spanish conquest. Take for example. The description of the temple at Palenque, which Lord Kingsborough, in his travels, do not only declares was built by the Jews, and is a copy of Solomon's temple, a cop by the Jews, and is a copy of Solomon's temple, by the Jews, and is a copy of Solomon's temple, a copy of Solomon's temple in Palenque. A, a copy of Solomon's temple. How, how many 
temples did exist in the Old Testament. Well, we know there was a destruction of the first temple, and then there was a reconstruction of the second temple. Are these the two copies they're telling us here? Where is the duplicate? All right, we have to really start. Now, I don't necessarily agree with, uh, you know, this being the second temple, because the, sem the second temple got destroyed. Both of the temples got destroyed, right? This is neither, uh, this is not the first temple, this is not the second temple, because the temple, it was supposed to be uh, made out of gold and wood and, you know, different things, right? This is not. This is made out of stone. That's pretty interesting, right? Now, that's what I want to show you. Please go check out this video. You guys get the full uh, breakdown and explanation. He's done a few videos. Other brothers have done uh, videos on this topic as well. Now, there's also another uh, site that Kermeo has gone over, and it's called El Peru, right? And this was, of course, also built by the same Maya that are also related to, you know, Pikal and things of that sort, right? But this is what the, archaeolo the archaeologists named it. They called it El Peru, but the ri original ancient name of the site was called Huaca, which means holy or sacred. And they called it El Peru. And they did that because there is an obvious connection with the ancient people of Peru and the Maya. But the question is, is who came from where? That's the question. Let me tell you this now. The language of, the, of Peru and the culture of Peru is all over the Americas. It's in Brazil. It's in Colombia. It's in Venezuela. It's in the West Indies. It's all the way up in Canada. But you can't say the same thing for the Maya. The Mayan civilization and culture is in specific places. But the culture of Peru is not only even in the Americas, it's also in Southeast Asia. It's also in the Polynesian Islands, where they also have words that are similar to Quechua, which is what Waka comes from. It's a Quechuan word, right? Hold on. Let's get this right here. I just, this just caught my eye. I didn't even see this before. This union was a political mover that linked El Peru to K. Inchi Balam. Do you know who this is? This is either uh, Pakal or someone related to Pakal. Yeah, it's his son. This is Pakal's son. This is Pakal's son right here. So El Peru is linked to Pakal's son. So there you go. So where did Pakal come from? Who is pa who is Pakal? What is Palenque? Let's get a little bit more of a description of Pakal. In plain sight, Mayan Lord Pakal's tomb. Now they think that he is an alien and stuff like that because of the amazing things that he pretty much built that he overseed and told his people to build right like what he did was amazing so they're just confused right yes a seven foot man is tall the greatest find in mayan archaeology is not to be explained i have yet to find a single photo of pakal's complete skeleton also described as tall without exact length Inconsistent age, supposedly 80, but the skeleton's teeth look looks 40. No radiocarbon dating, no DNA extraction. He does not fit. He cannot be shown. They only ever show you his mask, bro. This is one thing I've noticed, guys. They never do DNA tests on any of the people who actually connect with these certain people of like, you know, of these royal lineages or the natives and stuff like that. For example, you want to take, you want the Incan uh, kings to have a DNA test. Guess what? It's not going to happen. They just won't do it.
Now, they'll DNA test on the Egyptian uh, mummies and stuff, but uh, I guess when you get to the Americas, they're just so, they're so, you know, distraught and old that you can't do a DNA test, even though they've already uh, proven that the mummies here are the best in the world, that they preserve the bodies better than anyone else in the world, including Egypt. So how come they can't do a DNA test on these? Now, they, now for the women, they're okay. They're like, you know, all right, we'll do it for the women. They'll, they do DNA tests on the women, right? But they won't do it for the men. That is quite interesting. The Mayan pyramid relics located in Palenque, King Pical regarded as a god and is a giant monster with a height of about seven feet. So this dude was seven feet tall. His his uh, sarcophagus was about seven feet and almost 12 inches. So it was about eight, eight feet long. This was a big ass dude. Right? It's a big dude. And this is his mask. But they never show you his body. I was saying he had a cone head and then put a white guy. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand, bro. I don't understand. But he was buried with all this different jade, you know, and stuff like that. He was an important figure. Tried to look up any sort of DNA that they could find. They ain't doing it. They ain't doing it. Very interesting. Now, as far as his face structure, I mean, people, you, I mean, you can't really tell me that he doesn't resemble the people some of the people some of the you know indigenous people with more native blood or indigenous blood in the yucatan today you can't really tell me that after looking at pical um <laughs> so i don't know like i'm not saying that uh certain groups aren't related to the mayans of course they are the mayans you know especially like in the southeast of the united states you know a lot of those people have mayan lineage i just I just cringe when they say that they're the real Mayans and they're the pure-blooded Mayans. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, how could you prove that? The people in the Yucatan don't even say that. They don't even call themselves pure-blooded Mayans, and they could. So I don't, I don't understand that. But anyway, let's get to uh, the Book of Mormon. Let's go to 1 Nephi chapter 2. So this is when the sons of Lehi, which are Nephi, uh, Laman, Lemuel, and Sam, were going to, uh, you know, through the wilderness, right? Now, this is how Nephi is described. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, being what exceedingly young, nevertheless, being what large in stature, large in stature. What was we call seven feet tall? I had think that's large in stature right so he's big like be call and i nephi had also brought the records which were engraven upon plates of brass and also the ball or compass which was prepared for my father by the hand of the lord according to that which is written and it came to pass that we began to prosper exceedingly and to multiply in the land so after they multiplied in the land and began to prosper then what happens right and he also brought these things by the way the plates of brass um that was the writings of deuteronomy as well as other you know different writings that the hebrews stored away so let me let me tell you this because it says this in the book of remembrance we did not like the book of Deuteronomy because Deuteronomy was the book that Moses wrote, right? The other four books uh, pretty much got kind of hijacked by Aaron. They're Moses' writings originally that got hijacked by Aaron. And then he started, you know, pretty much talking his stuff. And this is why, you know, I don't know if we're going to get to this. The Catharians, they say that the God of the Old Testament is Satan. And the God of the New Testament is the actual Most High. Like all this stuff, you kind of have to connect it. This goes with the Books of Remembrance and stuff like that. 
where it talks about how, you know, the whole point of Hamashiach coming, well, not the whole point, part of the point of him coming was to break the law of Aaron. Aaron, he put a lot of bad foundations upon us as a people. And that's what led to, you know, a lot of our misunderstanding when it came to the Most High. That's what, that's where it comes from. So when people talking about how, oh, like, you know, you think, you think Yah only likes, I mean, you think Yah is going to accept this, this old thing and this and that. And I'm like, you don't understand the Most High. And I'm not going to argue with people like that. People don't understand the Most High because what is being done is that people, they're latching on to these traditions that were made up by men. And they don't really have the spirit to understand what is and what isn't. They also don't read other scriptures, other texts. For example, the law of Hammurabi is all in the Bible. A lot of those laws, not all of them, but a lot of them came from Hammurabi, who is Nimrod. And that's where Aaron got it from. So Aaron added his laws, some of his stuff. Like, come on now. Some of the Sumerian texts, uh, you know, uh, the Bible b borrowed from that stuff. Right? And I'm not saying that it's right or wrong, but I'm also understanding that some of this stuff is not from the Most High. Just because it's in a Bible, that doesn't mean it's from the Most High. Now, the point of me saying that is because Nephi, he was commanded to bring the book of Deuteronomy to the land that the Most High would lead him to. Right? That's what he instructed him to do. Again, the Israelites did not like the book of Deuteronomy. Why? Because talking about their judgment. They're like, oh, hell no. Nah. You don't want to accept that. Talking about how we're going to be destroyed from the land. Oh, man, we ain't listening to that. Moses, you hating. <laughs> they don't want to listen to that. All right? So they decided not to, you know, deal with that. Now, this was a video from Big Judah that came, ah, man, it was so long ago, but he was talking about the canonization. This is one of the best videos that the brothers made, man. But he was talking about the canonization of the Bible and how the true canonization didn't come until they invaded the Mayan temple and took their records. All of a sudden, now they have all these scripts, right? Because they got this stuff from the Maya. They got it from the Maya. So anyway, let's read. And I, Nephi, did take the sword of Laban. And after the manner of it, did make many swords. Lest by any means the people who were now called Lamanites should come upon us and destroy us. For I knew their hatred towards me and my children and those who were called my people. Hold on. I got you. Pikal sword. Janab Pikal the third, which is pretty much uh, Pikal's grandson. Sword made of obsidian, said to be the possession of the last Palenque king, Ki Inchi Janab Pikal. So it came from Pikal. <laughs> it came from Pikal. This is Laman's sword. I mean, Laban's sword. Passed down. Or copied from it. But it seems like that particular one was, was passed down. And I did teach my people to build buildings and to work in all manner of wood and of iron and of copper and of brass and of steel and of gold and of silver and of precious ores, which were in great abundance. So that's what he taught them how to do. And I, Nephi, did build a temple and I did construct it after the manner of the temple of Solomon. So Nephi built a temple after the manner of Solomon. Now that's what I was showing you here in Kurameo's video. Nephi's temple was built after the manner of Solomon's temple. Continuing, save it were not built of so many precious things. For they were not to be found upon the land, wherefore it could not be built like unto Solomon's temple. But the manner of construction was like unto the, the temple of Solomon, and the worksmanship thereof was exceedingly fine. 
So it was not built out of any of these different materials. It was not built out of quote unquote precious things. It was built out of stone. So the temple of Solomon, but it's built out of stone. Wow, that's real specific. That's really, really specific. Let's continue. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, did cause my people to be industrious and to labor with their hands. And it came to pass that they would, that I should be a, their king. But I, Nephi, was desirous that they should have no king. Nevertheless, I did them according to that which was in my power. And behold, the words of the Lord had been fulfilled unto my brethren, which he spake concerning them, that I should be their ruler and their teacher. Wherefore, I had been their ruler and their teacher according to the commandments of the Lord until the time they sought to take away my life. Wherefore, the word of the Lord was fulfilled in which he spake to me, saying that inasmuch as they will not hearken unto thy words, they shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. And behold, they were cut off from his presence. So, there you go, guys. <laughs> it can't get any more clear than that. They worship he called like a god, right? Because he was their teacher. He was their ruler. And what knowledge is, is an aphrodisiac, right? If you have knowledge, you really have everything. This is also why I constantly say on my channel that I gear my videos towards men. I'm not really trying to teach any women because when you teach a woman as a man, that's going to make them attracted to you. And I'm not trying to steal anybody's girl or nothing. I'm not trying to do that. I give this to the men. They can act like this. They got it from, you know, from studying or whatever. They don't have to give me credit. I don't want credit. Just take it, right? <laughs> take all the credit and be looked at as, you know, someone who's wise in your daughter's eyes or your wife, your wife's eyes, right? That's my whole goal. That's always really been my goal on this channel. Now, if women want to, you know, view, I have no problem with that. But please understand what my videos and who my videos are geared towards and why I say that. So, let me see. So, this is the mask of Pikal, another mask of Pikal. Very interesting look that Pikal has. I was going to read this article, but uh, I don't really feel like it. Icon of Mayan ruler displaying unique physical traits compared to common Mayan people. Again, he was a big dude. <laughs> he was big, bro. He was not a small dude. He was huge. He was huge, bro. See this face structure? See how he looks. This is not fake. <laughs> this came from their own people. This is from their people. So, let's go down the list. So Pikal, over seven foot or over seven feet, built a temple slash city, taught his people how to build. Co temple is a copy of Solomon's temple, owner of a peculiar passed down sword and an unknown death because they don't know how he died, really. Nephi also built, also a, was of large stature, built a city, taught his people how to build. Temple is a copy of, of Solomon's temple, owner of Laban's sword, and also an unknown death because I cannot find where he died in the Book of Mormon. Or how he died. Now let's read this real quick. The tree of life and tree of knowledge parallels in the pa in the Popu Vu and the Book of Mormon. Now we're not going to read this whole thing. But I'm going to leave the link in the description so you guys can check it out. There are distinctive parallels in the Popu Vu to the tree of life and the forbidden tree that are reflective of these trees of the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon teaches the doctrine of the fall from the Genesis tree of life and the forbidden tree in 2 Nephi chapter 2, verses 15 through 20, uh, 
chapter 42, verses 2 and 7. There are subtle references to the same doctrine taught in story form in the Popu Vu, part 11, chapter 3, that includes both tree symbols. Experts on the Popu Vu are generally agreed, after much study, that the Popu Vu is a genuine pre-Columbian sac uh, sacred book of the Quiche Maya, Maya that was not composed around biblical passages by the Indians, as some have supposed, to gain influence with Spaniards. We can consider the Book of Mormon, Book of Nephi, as a potential origin resource record because the Quiche chronicler knew there was an ancient book, quote unquote, no longer to be seen, from which his compilation of the Popu Vu had originated. So where did the records go? Joseph Smith said he found them in New York. All right. They didn't know where the records went. Now, check this out. But behold, King Benjamin gathered together his armies, and he did stand against them, and he did fight with the strength of his own arm with the sword of Laban. Words of Mormon, chapter 1, verse 13. So, what was that sword that was passed down? It is the sword of Laban. Remember that dude? Man, <laughs> this is why people think some of these books are fake. And I question these books because these Mormons are weird. These Mormons are weird, bro. The 2019 seal portion, right? This dude was talking about how he had the sword of Laban. And I'm like, what is wrong with this fool, man? And I didn't come across this yet. But it was just something off about it. I'm just like, I don't think you have this. I don't think you have this. I think you're lying. And of course, he is lying because the sword of Laban, they already found it. But these Mormons, man, <laughs> these Mormons are weird, bro. Now, they'll have books like this, like Lehi never saw Mesoamerica, that the Book of Mormon happened in South America. But this only proves my point. And what is my point? That... They did not leave the Middle East. The reason why they say this, the reason why they come up with theories like this, like the Book of Mormon happened in South America, the reason why they say this is because the culture is all in South America. All the Mayan culture comes from the Peruvians. It comes from South America, bro. It comes from this area. It absolutely comes from this area. So where did they go? Where did they leave? Right? As we can see, um, Lephi, uh, uh, Lephi, uh, Nephi, he built his temple after they sailed from wherever they came from. He built his temple, right? In the first land they went to, he built his temple. I think that's called the land of Bountiful, something like that. If I'm not mistaken. That's where he built his temple, right? So if he built his temple there, then they had to have sailed from somewhere else. They didn't come from here. This isn't the origin point. So they came from somewhere else. Do you now do we find any of this culture in the Middle East? No. Do we find it in Asia? Some of it. But we find the origin point in Peru. Now even the construction of this temple is very similar to the to the buildings and stuff. Or the oldest city in Peru called Corral. This is the oldest city of Peru. And these, this city also has a ziggurat uh, look to the building. It is the oldest city. It's desolate now. Some people have said this is Jerusalem. I haven't really looked into it like that. But I haven't, <laughs> I haven't, uh, you know, denied it either. Because this sure as hell is pretty damn desolate. And this is the oldest, this, this is pretty much the oldest uh, stuff in Peru. By far, in fact, no, it's the oldest stuff in the Americas. Excuse me. <laughs> Let me correct myself. It's the oldest in the whole Americas. And you, and this is built how the Mayans built, build, you know, their structures. So where did it come from? If, if, 
if the oldest stuff is in Peru, if the oldest culture of the Mayans is in Peru, how did they come from the Middle East? How? I need answers, bro. There's another place right next to it. And this is in Lima, which is called the City of Kings. You see this? You see this? What is this? Is this called La Juanca? I don't know what that is, but it's a ziggurat. Doesn't that look like <laughs> Solomon's Temple? Kind of does. I don't know if it is, though. It doesn't mean it is. But it could be. Let me see what I also want to go over. Oh, yeah. So even the Taino or the Arawaks, all their culture comes from the Maya. Let's read this. In 1492, the Caribbean's indigenous people created an everlasting impact on the rest of the planet. After, after that year, the Spanish and Portuguese became conduits for the dispersal of many Taino and Carib products, words, and technologies. Some words like hurricane, canoe, barbecue, hammock, tobacco, cannibal, K or key, uh, barracuda, a maiz, and savanna entered world languages. So did foods like corn, pineapple, peanut, sweet potato, yucca, chili peppers, allspice, uh, sarsa, parilla, and much more. Became an integral part of the planet's diet and caused mark marked increases in population growth in Asia, Africa, and Europe. Most of these foodstuffs originated in South and Central America, except for Jamaican jerk chicken, Many other local fru fruits, medicines, and lumber have not yet become popular overseas. World famous jerk chicken is uh, Yamaye Taino method of cooking that was called barbicoa, the original word of barbecue. Uh, Jamaica's maroon societies learned this method of cooking called jerk who passed it on to contemporary societies. The term jerk is from a Mayan word for uh, uh for smoking drying meat so that's where the taino or arawak cultures they come from they come from the mayans they come from the mayans they came over they came from over here right that's what they just said all their cultures from the mayans but hold on because when you really look into their history i made this video a while ago i still never made a pdf of this book shalom all praises to the most high no this page As you can see here, they're pretty much saying that they came from Peru. Let's read this. I'm trying to wait for me to move this to the, the right a little bit. Stuart postulate. Come on, man. Stuart's postulate has come to be known as the circum Caribbean theory. He did not attempt to reconcile it with linguistics and physical uh, anthropologist theory that the ancestors of the Taino had migrated from Amazonia through the Orinoco Valley into the West Indies. Instead, he implicitly limited himself to cultural evidence and exclaimed it solely in terms of traits. It did not occur to him to trace the ancestry of the Tainos and their neighbors in terms of whole cultures, comparable to the languages and biologies being studied by linguistics and physical anthropologist followers of Stewart have deleted the spread into amazonia from his circum caribbean theory and added diffusion from the andes into both so he's saying that the andes is are the originators of all of this stuff all these different spreads whether it's central america whether it's amazonia whether it's the caribbean everyone came from the andes but the maya came from jerusalem 
had to come from the Andes unless the Jerusalem is near the Andes. How? This little known Peruvian civilization built pyramids as old as ancient Egypt's. That's the one I just showed you. The remarkable discovery places Corral as one of the oldest known cities in the Western Hemisphere. Coastal Peru has long been considered one of the six recognized cradles of world civilization. This might have been that city that Shem built. This might just be it, bro. Because it's the oldest in the Western Hemisphere. This might just be it. But let's skip down. Archaeologists believe the sites collectively represent the oldest center of civilization in the Americas, one which lasted from roughly 3000 to 800 BC, completely uninfluenced by outside forces. It flourished nearly 4000 years before the start of the powerful Incan Empire. So it came way before the Incans or the tribe of Judah, the kings of Judah it came before it. So Kind of lets me know that it's probably where um, Shem and them built their city. So that's all I have for this video, guys. Uh, I'll probably come at you guys with another video tomorrow. We'll probably get back on the exit stuff. The heck? <laughs> what the heck? Anyway. May peace be with you.